with great pleasure, deep gratitude, and a whole lot of pride. I give you, my friend, my sister, the president of the largest labor union in this country, Lily Eskelson Garcia. And you're going to take this, and and I can't I can't hug Becky, and this is just killing me. This is absolutely killing me, um, and that is so not fair. That is so not fair. Um, I tell people, Becky, that I love you. Alberto's jealous. He is. He should be. Um, and I thank you for that. I'm um, overwhelmed with that. Um, sweet, wonderful. I wish I'd done half those things, but thank you. you. You read it just the way I wrote it, so I do appreciate that. Ah, to Becky, to the princess, the, you, you give it all. You give it all, princess. And Kim, uh, who, who just, I don't know how you do it, Kim. How do you juggle? You know, uh, uh, I could go down the list. It's, it's just too hard to mention everybody. The incredible executive committee um, that I couldn't live without. Um, the team that uh, just is all in, no matter what. The NEA staff who work night and day. Night and day, they move mountains to bring us together for this. They work night and day, 365 days a year. Uh, and to St. Teresa, St. Teresa Kelly, my assistant, and the woman who makes my life possible. I know she's watching at her kitchen table right now. Um, and Teresa, tonight I announce that Alberto and I have decided to adopt you so that you can come and live with us in El Paso. I know, because I can't tie my shoes without you. And you know I adore you. I love so many people in this world that has been my family. Um, I'm gonna miss you as I head out the door. This is my last report to you as your president. So it's also my last chance to say thank you to the other people uh, that um, have no idea what I have been doing for the last 30 years. They just know I'm never home for dinner. And so I wanna thank my boys. My babies, Jeremy and Jared, their spouses, Mike, who you heard sing the national anthem earlier, and Tana, and my little baby Joe, my 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 baby girl granddaughter. Hi, Lily Joe. Hi, Lily Joe. Nice name. She is so in the will. And my mom, mom, Chili Pace is watching this on her laptop in Chico, California. She turns 91 this summer. So let me repeat. She's watching this on her laptop. She is a tech goddess. She is like the emoji queen. And she loves coming to the RA all these years. She could always share a room with me. I know that um, she didn't want to miss this one, and she's not missing it. She's online with everybody else, and she sends her love to all her dear friends out there. Hmm. And there is no way to properly thank Senor Jose Alberto Garcia Lozano, my husband, mi esposo, el amor de mis amores. Thank you for forgiving me all the times that we couldn't be together. Alberto, after six long years, finally got his green card this year. Yay! crowd goes wild. And now he's studying for his citizenship test. And so we're actually studying history. We're studying what democracy looks like, especially these days in the United States of America. Now, I have told him for years, we've all told our families, the NEA, Representative Assembly, is the largest democratic body in the world. And he, you know, we don't raise our hands when we vote. He's heard us shouting, I 
no, moving to close debate, division. Uh, and I looked down once when I was cheering and he was there yelling along with everyone else. So, I mean, I ran down, I said, hon, you can't vote. And he said, oh, no te preocupes, it's okay. I'm voting on both sides. So, um, he thinks we're crazy and he's right. We are poco loco. But when we get serious, he told me once, you know, there is power in your people. And again, he's right. You have no idea how hard it is for me to say those words. He's right. The question is, what are we gonna do with it? You know, that's why we come together. We come together to answer that question. What are we going to do with our power? Do you know why we chose this year's theme, our democracy, our responsibility, our time? Do you know how it got up there on the screen? It's because this is all about me. Uh, the folks in this room know that. They know I'm not kidding. Because someone this year called me unpatriotic for telling the truth. I said in an interview, America never was America for too many Americans. It's from a Langston Hughes poem. I am a teacher in my bones, and it's my job to teach the truth. I taught my sixth graders U.S. history that wasn't in our history book. I taught them about the American Revolution. I taught them what a republic was, that we were not going to have a king, that we, the people, would democratically vote for leaders who would make decisions for us so that we could have freedom and justice for all, except for you, because you're black. In fact, oh, you were born in that state? Oh, well, you're not actually a real person. You know, technically. Your property. Oh, except for you, because you're a Native American. And some of us would really like to have your land. You know, the land we agreed in treaties would be yours as long as grass grows and water runs. Yeah, we didn't really mean that. Oh, and of course, except for you and you and you, because you're women and because you don't speak English and because you woke up one day and decided you were gay, because that's how that works. Or you, because you have a disability or because you're Jewish or you're Catholic or Muslim or Mormon, because you were born in a time when we did not include you in we the people. So law and order and freedom and opportunity and happiness for us and for you, not so much. I'll say it again, because it is historical truth. America never was America for too many Americans. But what some folks who know that haven't figured out, is that this wasn't by accident. Exclusion was and continues to be intentional. And we have to know our history or we'll never find a path forward to something better. Folks will just look around at the absurdity of our inequality and they'll think, well, this just doesn't make any sense. Well, why do some schools have so much more than other schools? Why do some kids come to school hungry? Why does this parent have a job and health care benefits and that parent has to have a GoFundMe page because his kid has cancer? Let me tell you what I think you already know, but you have to say it out loud. Inequality is by design. From those who colonized us 400 years ago, systems were built around people, by people in power to keep their power. 
And 400 years ago, who were those people in power? White, male, Protestant, property owners, people with money. Those guys set up systems to make themselves the decision makers. And the decisions they made benefited them and their families. But you know that this isn't a history lesson. It's current events. People who think like the Koch brothers and the DeVos family have been with us since the beginning. Freedom means their ability to make more money. And so to limit their ability to exploit workers, to harm consumers, to dirty the environment, is to limit their freedom to make more money. In their heads, for them to have more, everyone else has to have less. And what we know is there is no limit to their greed. They have corrupted our cherished word, freedom. And they have chosen their champion, Donald Trump. You know, they had to change his new campaign slogan, which was supposed to be, keep America great. They weren't sure we wanted to keep what we had here in the midst of a global pandemic that has thrown us into chaos, in good part, because of Donald Trump's incompetence and inability to grasp that it was real and dangerous and that people would die. For how many months did he say, oh, it's a hoax, it's the Democrats, it's fake news? He has still shown zero responsibility, zero leadership in a national response to the greatest health crisis of our time. His weak, limping leadership has the economy coming apart at the seams. His Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, has said not one word about what public schools are going to need to open safely. Her only response has been to try and find yet another way to take public dollars out of uh, public schools uh, to bail out what she calls the education industry of privatized edu businesses. But imagine the slogan, keep America great, keep us where we are against a time of national shock, a time when we all watched on TV a man begging for his life, slowly strangled by a calm police officer with his hand in his pocket keep us where we are at a time when the country is exploding in righteous anger. Anger from the streets, shouts of justice for black lives, keep us with a president who gassed and terrified peaceful people legally protesting in front of our, our White House because they were inconvenient to his photo op, keep America great. We're doing just great, was a sick joke. And they saw it. It was an insult to reality. And Trump changed it pretty fast. You don't see that. He went back to the old one. The old one, I think, was worse. Make America great. You know, if you had just put a period there, I probably buy that one. We all want to make America great, but he added an evil word. Again, make America great the way it used to be. Go back to when we were great. When in the history of our country can you go back to when it was better for African Americans, when it was better for women? when it was better for immigrants or the poor or Native Americans or LGBTQ people, Latinos, Asians, Pacific Islanders, any people of color. I taught my sixth graders 
the history of struggle in our country, the struggle for justice. And I gave them the names of heroes who weren't in our history book. But I want you to understand this. I taught them to love our country because the founders got the poetry right, whether they meant to or not. They told us who we were supposed to be. I'm in love with the poetry of who we are supposed to be. It's radical. It's powerful. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all people are equal. Yeah, I know they said men, and I know they meant men. But I told my kids, this is a democracy, and we're going to vote. We're going to decide on what it should mean. We took a vote, and they voted it meant all people. So that's what it means. And it should mean that governments are instituted by the people to secure and protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of all our happiness. Not a king, not the powerful, that all have a right to pursue what makes them happy. I told my kids, they have to fight for this democracy to become real, that if you want to be a patriotic American, you don't hide your eyes. You have to push. You're supposed to push and fight for who we're supposed to be. It's supposed to be all the people equal under our laws. It's the principle we're fighting for. It's what we must fight to become whatever their intent. Y a mí no me importa. Doesn't matter to me. The founders told us who we were supposed to be. And they told us when we're not, we're supposed to change it. So when hypocrisy is exposed, and the truth is that in a land of the free, the government allowed legal enslavement. That in a land based on the rule of law, the government allowed the theft of native lands. That time and time again, all does not mean all. Then someone says it out loud and it's uncomfortable. And it sounds unpatriotic to mention uncomfortable truths about who we were, who we are, and who we have yet to become. But there is no pride. There's no patriotism in hiding the truth. The truth simply opens new stories of inspiration and courage, new heroes worth lifting up. It's our sacred principles and those who fight and sacrifice and even die to bring those principles to life who are worth putting up on a pedestal. These heroes knew sacrifice. But here we are at an assembly to decide where we should put our voice and our power. This is interesting history. But should it be our history? Should it be our sacrifice? The NEA, educators, public servants, should this be our work? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it should and it must. We are educators. We are in public service. We are unionists. We are activists. We are patriots. All of us are called on, both those who had to demand their rights and those whose rights have never been questioned. All of us have a patriotic responsibility to demand that all of us be included in this imperfect democracy. So, hermanos y hermanas, you and I, we are called on to act. So what will you do? What will you do for your colleagues, your students, the families you love, the communities where you live? 
What will you do as we face the most dangerous threat to our democracy we have ever faced? We are threatened by a man who does not recognize any law that he has to obey. He believes he is above the law. He acts as if he is our king. He has disgraced and corrupted his office. He has tried to manipulate us and get us to hate each other, and he knows exactly what he's doing. He is surgically removing certain parts of we, the people. He separated Latino babies from their moms on the border. He put desperate children in cages as if they were animals. He declared a ban on Muslims. He dishonored the honorable service of LGBTQ soldiers and sailors. He told four women of color, members of Congress, that they should go back to where they came from, that they had no right to speak out about our government. It's our democracy. And we individually and collectively have the responsibility to act, to make our principles live and breathe. And it is especially our time because we are the educators in public service of America. We live in every community. We love someone else's child. It's in our job description. And because we accept the profound trust that is placed in us. And we have stepped up before. Throughout our union's history, we have fought for the rights of little girls to have the same education opportunities as little boys. We have fought for the dreams of our dreamers. We have fought for black student lives and for our students who wear hijab or speak with an accent or live with disabilities or struggle in poverty or trans kids who just want to go to the bathroom without being humiliated. America's public schools look like America. We and our students, we live like America. And in the darkest times of injustice in our country, there have been brave, ordinary people who will act, who will literally stand together and say, no, this isn't right. And yes, I am ready to do something about it. I am ready to vote. You're not getting off with that. It's got to be more than that. I am ready to get others to come and vote with me. Okay, more than that. I am ready to help a candidate. I am ready to be a candidate. I'll call people. I'll draw, drive seniors to the polls on election day. I'm ready to testify. I'm ready to contribute. I'm ready to protect a child. I'm ready to debate a friend. I'm ready to say yes when it matters and say no when it matters. I am ready to march and risk and shout and show up. Something is at a crossroads in the world right now. Something is changing. You feel it. I feel it. I don't know if it's for better or worse. But something is about to change and we are going to be a part of it. We will be leaders in defining what democracy will look like in our country. And someday when you're asked what you did, when democracy was in peril, when your country needed you, you're going to have a powerful answer. You are going to be able to say, I was part of the most magnificent collective voice and collective power that refused to be silent. You will be able to say, I fought on the side of who we are supposed to be. I fought for an America worthy of us all. Que Dios te bendiga. El honor siempre, el honor es para mí, hermanos y hermanas. Gracias por todo. God bless you.
It has been the honor of my life to be the smallest part of us. Gracias de mi corazón. Go, we must fight. Y vamos a ganar. We will win. Mil gracias.